is help I can't let go of past gripes. So the first thing that is crucial to think about, we're going to go into three stories and we're going to discuss them, but I wanted to, you have to know something about you, about yourself. On a scale, I want everyone to do this, all those viewers at home, whatever, and everybody here, I want you to think about what, on a scale from one to ten, one is you are a, you know, impossible to forgive. You are not forgiving for the, that girl in third grade who stole your favorite pink notebook or whatever, and you still don't like her to this day. Uh, that means you're a one, okay? It's something your husband did ten years ago that was small or whatever. It doesn't, if it's big, maybe you should <laughs> not forgive him. No, I'm joking, but we're, we're going to learn it right now, so don't worry. We're going to go over it. But anyway, if you, if you are the type of person who's a 10, which is, you know, someone punches you in the arm and they say sorry, and you're like, oh, okay, you know, or you, and you have a bruise and you're like, okay, whatever, whatever. So you have to know, I'm giving you dumb examples today. That's This is the dumb example day. Did I <laughs> tell you that? Okay, so from one is you're a forgiving type person and a 10, sorry, the other way around. One, you're a non-forgiving type person. Ten, you're very, very forgiving of people. Everybody in your own head right now, you don't have to tell it to me, everybody in your mind, are, are you a three? Are you a seven? Like, yeah, you, you're pretty chilled, and if someone does something annoying to you, you know, then, you know, you'll bear a grudge. But for the most part, you're a very forgiving type of person. Knowing that about ourselves is such a blessing. It's the secret sauce. Because if you know, you know what? Right now, I've got my number. Let's say your number is two. And you know everything this one person, you always see, the, you know, this person at work or this, this other, you know, the, someone's a teacher here, you know, this other teacher in the, th the thing, she comes in and she never washes her, her mu coffee mug and she, you know, her teacher in the teacher's lounge and she this and she's annoying. But you know you're the type of person who's very unforgiving. You're like, oh, that's just me you know, and work on it. We all are, uh, if you're a one, you need to work on being closer to a two. If you're a seven, work on closer to being an eight. So that's what we're working on here. This level, you know, yes, wrongs are going to be done to us through no fault of our own. That's how God himself designed the world. I don't know why. If I, I'll, I'll let you know if I uh, <laughs> find out. You know, we don't know why it is that, but that's how it is. So we j we can work on that. We can shift our whole attitude and have a much more enjoyable, pleasant life just by working on our, right, our well, ability. Right, my husband Larry would tell you that I'm a 10 with everyone else and a 1 with him. Ooh. Because I definitely have it. He says to me all the time, he goes, you have, you, like, let everyone get away with everything. You don't remember anything. You have no enemies. No matter what someone's done to you, you're like, what? that and he's like what he goes but you remember every single thing that I ever wow. did from wow. day one wow. Wow. and I said well that's the point I take all my energy to remember your things I can't remember anyone else's <laughs> there you but go. he definitely okay. feels okay. like there's there's a uh, there's a, a gap between, a gap okay. between me so and here's else. what we're what we know we know from the from from the um, I was going to say Masala Sharon, but it's it's really the from the whole Musser movement, the whole character development. We know for a fact that if you work on one character trait and you improve it, it will fix every, f fix everywhere in your life. So, it, which is gorgeous. It's such a nice thing to sort of just be able to rely on that. So, what we're going to be working on here for the entirety of this program is working on our relationship with our husband to repair our relationships with everybody else. So if you're forgiving of everybody else, <laughs> it's not like it doesn't count as a blip. It's part of your character. It shows you you've got, you know, you've got a, a, um, some skills in the area that you can rest away from over here and pull and use them yeah. and, and, and maximize them here. So it's, it's not, all is not okay. lost, okay? <laughs> okay, but we are, we're going to be working on our husband because it's the hard. You know, I have a woman, she says to me, she said, you know, uh, my husband says this, 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 this. I get along with everybody. Everyone, right? Everybody. Everyone says, my mother says I'm the best daughter. My sister says I'm the best sister. My brother says I'm the best. Every per way I go, I'm the best employee, the best whatever. Only my husband. <laughs> Exactly. says that I need working on this, that, this, and the other thing, okay? I'm like, do you spend 24-7 under the same roof with those other people? Do they watch you when you, you know, you, the, the whole kitchen is cleaned up and you spend an extra hour with a toothpick around the edge of the, I don't know, whatever, I'm making stuff up, but I'm just saying, 
they don't live with you. Of course you're going to have more challenges. That's why, you're, uh, why God gave you your husband is to push you to the end of your limit. And it's also given over that the reason God gave us children is to be able to become mentioned, to become menches. Well, how do you translate menches? Mm. Awesome people, just awesome, kindly, generous, good-hearted people. Is that the right translation? Something like that. So I'm getting nods. So, oh, hey, good enough, good enough. So the issue is that for our husband to work on this stuff that we're going to be working on, this is going to work, it's going to make our whole life better. Okay, let's go to the first story. So the uh, mensch, by the way, under the dictionary, is a person uh, of integrity she's and honor. On her game, what? It's a person, a person of what? of integrity and honor. Hmm. Integrity and honor. That's interesting. Well, yeah. what's dictionary? Because I think yeah, of mensch as somebody who's yummy. You know, someone who has no mensch is someone who has is an honorable. You're a menchy person. You're an honorable. Person. Yeah. Honorable. Yeah. Okay, yeah. I'll take it. We're yeah. there. Okay, <laughs> okay. Well, that's what we're working on to be yeah, that honorable. Was, uh, Webster's okay. Dictionary, so. so let me tell you this first story. Thank you very much, You're Sarit, welcome. on her game. Okay, the first story is about this. Um, this is. Oy, 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 oy. So this woman I know started the intermittent fasting protocol. I don't know if anyone's heard of it or whatever. It's, it's, it's really kind of cool. You, you um, stop eating at 7 p.m. at night, or you can pick your time, but basically you stop eating for, for eight, uh, 16, 16 hours. hours. So you fast yeah. from 8 p.m. This is, see, this is also a women's uh, 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 advice show, advice column. Is, no, but anyway, you stop eating at, eight, at 7 p.m. and then you start eating at 11 a.m. So basically you're eating in, for eight hours and then you, you're fasting. And it's actually, a lot of people find it very uh, easy to do because then mm -hmm. when you're, we've got the eight hours, it's really hard to pack that many calories in. But anyway, so this woman is on this intermittent fast. She's starting, get a doctor's advice and recommendation before you start any, med whatever. <laughs> Or disclaimer. Uh, any lawyers here? Huh? You know. Okay. So whatever. But anyway. So she's on the intermittent diet, and she's pretty excited about it. And she's with their at her parents' house, and her siblings are there, and whatever. She starts talking about it, and she said, you know, it's really great. She said it's the easiest diet I've ever been on because you don't have to think too much in calories and how uh, oil. You know, what now I have full fat dressing on my salads. It's you know you you don't you don't need to count calories as much much works really works for me. And also I I notice I'm not even starving in the morning. I'm a little hungry here and there, and I drink tea or coffee or or water or whatever. Fine. So she said, the only thing is I'm losing weight a lot slower than I would expect, but at least I'm losing. And her husband chimed in and said the following. Uh-oh, I see the looks. <laughs> he said, well, the reason that she's, you're, she's not losing, she's, he was making a joke a joke to the other people in the room. The reason she's not losing is because when she's on her eight hours on, she eats donuts the whole time. <laughs> <laughs> Did not go over. Yeah, everyone kind of chuckled ish. And she cannot forgive him for this. She cannot, in front of everybody. He embarrassed her. And she's trying. She's really trying. And he was. So I asked her, did you mention it to him? And she said, uh, of course I mentioned to him. And he's completely apologetic. He's like, he really, he's like, you're right. I thought you would laugh and they would laugh and whatever. And it would be a funny thing. And you never joke about women's weight. Like, are you out of your mind? Like, you know, uh, to be to his credit, he's only married. I think I, I'm guessing five, six years. So he, you know, he hasn't been <laughs> trained in yet. But you know, he, so he did make a gaffe. But she can't forgive him. So the question is, how can she get over her resentment about this? No more donuts for him. <laughs> no more donuts for him. <laughs> Donut less Hanukkah. Coming. Donut less Hanukkah. Yeah. There you go. No more <laughs> you always have to look at the person's intention. If he was really meaning what he was saying, he would never have said it. You know, like if you, if he was really trying to be mean, he would never have said that in front of all the people. He really, honestly, thought it was just a funny, like, joke. Like he really, he yeah, he was trying to just be cute and funny. He really, if he was trying to be mean and like embarrass her he wouldn't you know he wouldn't have done that like that so that's very good his intention i mean as as hurtful as it was to her and embarrassing and it's hard it always helps if you could try and realize that 
you what know, his intention was. He cares was. about her, and he really wasn't trying to. That's be very, so. very good. But there's one. She's so good in putting her <laughs> shoes on the other person's feet. We really can learn that from you. So thank you. It's a great contribution to our class that way of thinking. Uh, but but the, I asked her, you know, his intention, whatever. She said, "Look, I, I hear it. I get it." And she said, "A big part of my problem is that not only." It's kind of like now I'm like the fact that he could do that in front of my parents. Like in other words, now my si sisters and my mother know that my husband is capable of ickiness, of nastiness, of meanness, and like I didn't want them to know that, and I didn't. It's private, and he, that's not like him. And now they think that's how he is. Mm -hmm. So he, he, right. did, well, yeah, I feel like he did so much mean. damage, and I don't know how to. Get over I, I think yeah. it's more of like she's so hurt because she's trying and it's more of how she feels about herself in the situation. I'm sure it flew over her parents' head. Like they don't, they thought it was just as a joke also. Yeah, but it's when someone's more sensitive, like for instance, like I oversook us and you know, it happened to me. And that wasn't about food, it was about something else. I have a lot of stuff in the house. Like not stuff that I use. I'm a crafty person, so mm -hmm. I like crafts. And we don't necessarily have uh, enough closet space in the house, so it's not in the house. It's on the side of the house, all in boxes, very neatly. I'm Everything is over. like, I mean, yeah, you know, if you want to like craft. My day off, I am at you. That's it kind awesome. of drives yeah. my husband crazy. Which part? The, the stuff, the box <laughs> is too much on the side of the but house. But he likes the he likes the table fixings or whatever exactly. you do. He likes the beautiful sukkah decorations yeah. and the paste. Every every holiday has an, a theme, and you know it's. I have all the you have to props show your for that. Our WhatsApp group. No That's, problem. I'm, I'm in. I'm so in. So at the table, it came up like that. I have stuff, and it came out like I felt to myself like you know this is like insulting to me because I'm a neat person. You know, it has nothing to do and with cleanliness. And you haven't been. Yeah. Uh -huh. um, and I said, it's my stuff. I said, build me another room or something. You know, like, mm -hmm. it, so it just came out. But then I, I was, like, saying to myself afterwards, instead of being upset at him, which I kind of was, and I, I called him out, and I said that was, like, insulting. And then, the, like, the kids kind of, like, got into the conversation of, like, my stuff, which wasn't right. Mm -hmm. But then I said Wait, to when myself, did you say the insulting? Afterwards or at the time? No, afterwards, when, After, the, oh, that, when the company better. left. That's better, yeah, yeah, yeah. And then I said to myself, you know... Was he teasing or had a tone of, it wasn't like, like, it a, bothered him? Well, it was just like, he said it, like, also, like, in a joking matter, but, like, just, like, as a matter of fact, like, I have, you know, all of this stuff. My wife's kind of stuff. stuff. You know, yeah, whatever. Yeah. But I didn't say, oh, what about your stuff? And you don't pick up this from the floor. At least I, I pick up my clothes. Like, I didn't go there. Mm -hmm. But then afterwards, I said to myself, you know. Well, hold on a sec. Isn't that awesome that she didn't go there? Mm -hmm. Like, hello. Yeah, you know. <laughs> hello, that's awesome. But then I said, you know what? I'm proud of myself. I said to, like, to myself, like, I, you know, I'm a clean person. I'm a neat person. I make beautiful, you know, yamim tovim. And... You know what? Too bad. Like, you know, to, and I said to myself, you know, like, so this woman who's dieting, she could say to herself, I'm proud of myself. So what? You know, mm -hmm. I don't eat those 14 hours. Look at me, you know. He doesn't have to appreciate it. I appreciate myself. And it's really about how you internalize it's and good. what people could, you know, people hurt with words and they don't necessarily mean to, but it's how yeah, you like interpret them. Yeah, he didn't mean to. He to really yourself. didn't mean to. But so it, kind of like just... You know, Talk to yourself. I think right right now, it's all a reflection yeah. of how yeah. sensitive we are yeah. about it's something. It's your, self, your own yeah. self-esteem. Yeah, but I think in her situation, because I so think back to when I first married and the early years, is I think in her situation, if he would have sat, if she would have been sitting with him in the kitchen and right. she would have sat there and said to him, oh my God, I don't know why I'm not losing as much as I would like to lose. And he would be like, well, stop eating all those donuts. She would have laughed. Because it would have been totally them, and she would be like, but I'm not eating donuts. It's like, well, she could have been, gone to a whole conversation with him. Mm -hmm. Because it was in front of her family yeah, and her sisters, yeah. she mm -hmm. very much, I remember, I remember that when I was the first couple of years of marriage, and even till today, my, my parents were over for sukkahs, and I was like, so much more aware of how my husband was behaving. Was he treating me the right way? And would my parents see that he's taking care of me the right way? It was so much more like on so my head space and how many yeah. years we're married, 22 yeah. years. Like yeah. who cares at that yeah. point? I mean, obviously this is, it was so, I was so attuned to it. And I remember when I was in the beginning I, we all years. Have that. I mean, right, no, right, I was in the beginning years, I was really, yeah, he would make a, a comment yeah. 
that was, I would her. totally get, like, how could he? And now they're going to think, and, and I would give it to him afterwards. You know, now they're going to, they don't see us in, in normal day-to-day -day thing, and now they're going to think you're a terrible husband, and, and they're always going to remember that, and they're always the going to point it out to me. And, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And there was so much more pressure, and it, every comment became so much more magnified. That's what this woman was feeling. And totally. So she just can't, totally. She, all so of these thought processes magnified. she had, but she couldn't, she just can't let it, it go. Yeah, because she, she can't, because she can go. let, she can forgive him, but how does she, how does she let everyone Rectify else it. know mm -hmm. yeah. that he's really not like this? Right. That's what her mind keeps going to. Like, how you do I fix? The tail and the donkey. Right. That's exactly it. How do I fix it. that? So, yeah. So, and so. that... That part of that problem is what makes it Im so difficult for her to let go. So what is she going to do? What? How can she get over this resentment? We haven't heard from you. You usually have great comments. We're waiting on you. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, how can she no. get over that resentment? Sorry. How can she let it go? It, even if she, like she said, if she, even if she, in her heart of hearts, she says, you know, I know he didn't mean it, and he, whatever, but every time she thinks of the answer to that. Uh, she yeah, yeah, okay, yeah. you're on. Okay. Um, she could think of something that she did. That was also not so good that she's not proud of. And, That's and, good. And have humility about it. And have humility about it. That's fantastic. Or, or she could she could tell him that he has to promise her that next time they're together with her family, he's going to make the I most amazing this. comment. And he's gonna say, Oh my gosh, you look so good in that dress. And you're it's unreal how how all the hard work you've been doing. Look at how well, you it's look. paid off. Totally. Whoa. And it would be like don't two you seconds love that? taking everything. Well, that's what I would make. That's what I made him do. You don't have to think too much about I'll how be in the I kitchen and I'll be put, ready yeah. to bring something out. I'm like, no, no, you take it. You take it inside. It'll look very nice if you come and serve it to me <laughs> while I'm sitting at the table. So I'm going to sit down and you come in with it. <laughs> Adorable. Here, honey. Adorable. But you know what? These impressions, as, as childish as it's, we all have them. We yeah. all have them. We want our parents to think well. Yeah. We want the yeah. in-laws to think well yeah. of our relationship and how they see it. And, and uh, yeah, very good. Okay, that you guys did great. Okay, next one. Next story. There's a woman, and she gets two job offers. One job offer is to be um, the, a, a, an assistant in an advertising agency. And it's kind of fun. You know, she's going to be doing graphics and, you know, learning graphics. And, you know, it's, a, it's, a, it's it seems very creative and very exciting. And the other job offer that she gets is being the business manager of a medical office. And there's like eight doctors or whatever. And it's like, ah! So one pays a whole lot more than the other. I don't know. She didn't tell me how much. But one pays a lot more than the other. Um, and so she comes and she's talking to her husband and they're weighing the pros and cons and whatever. And her husband says to her, I think you will be more satisfied if you're earning more money. I think if you're doing that job, even if you like it at the end of the day, when you get your paycheck, you're going to be like, whatever, you know, and we could really use the money. And so he kind of talked her into taking this medical <coughs> job, this, uh, you know, running the medical office. So she took the job and now she's got everything every day she has that's stressful she blames him every you know uh, her whole life is completely stressed out and she has this big gripe about him for not letting her choose her own path but kind of steering her into what he and she then she kind of all the stuff he had said because I said did he really say you should take it for more money she said no he also thought I would want it for more money but that's not where my head goes my head goes in that he pushed me for this because he wanted more money. And meanwhile, our life is 10 times more stressed. And they won't let me out early on Friday afternoons, and the other place did. And, you know, just everything is like ratcheted, ratcheted. The money is good, and I like having that little cushion, but not enough to justify it. And I just can't get over this gripe I have with my husband. Okay, so the question is, how can she get over her resentment about this? Well, I think it's sort of easy because she's not taking responsibility for her own role because she made the decision, and the end of the day, it was her decision. So, you mean she's blaming him? Yeah, I mean she's not taking responsibility of her her role in in making the final decision. Well, maybe, she did, maybe she took the job because Jean Bias. She was listening to her husband. She didn't really want to take the job all along, and yet I'm I'm going to do it to please my husband. Now it should have worked out because when you listen to your <laughs> husband, it's all show, <laughs> right? So I don't know. <laughs> there. That's a good question. Those of you who are regular right. listeners, this is an issue. Why? <laughs> ah! <laughs> 
Yeah. Oh, Sorry. Oh. <laughs> There's a sign. Yeah. <laughs> there goes the shy bias. Thank you. There goes the shy bias. The shy bias out the window. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, is that right? Is that... Guys, is that come out okay? Yeah, it's yeah. in the right place. I don't yeah. know how to do this. this how do they do Huh? This way. This this way? Yeah. Is that good? Yeah. Yeah, okay, good. Uh, fine. I got him thumbs up. Thumbs up. I like thumbs up. Okay, so the question is, it did, but it should have worked out because she listened to her husband, right? So maybe, maybe, this is, this is interesting. I'm not quite sure. I'm not quite sure because you bring up a really good point. She's not taking responsibility for it. But she was trying to do the right thing for her husband. But if she's trying to do the right thing from her husband, maybe the reason the book fell is because she wasn't, she didn't do it with a full heart. <laughs> I'm making stuff up as we go along. <laughs> if you did notice, um, you know, I, I'm not sure. Huh? But also, we don't always see the blessing. We know there's blessing that came into the house by her following her husband, by you know listening to the advice of her husband. We know for sure, guaranteed. I have like 20 that we have 20. Uh, sources that tell us that blessing comes from that. So um, you can look them all up. There's literally 20, maybe, and those are not including the ones I didn't find. So we know there's blessing. You may not see exactly correlate one-to-one -one what the blessing is, but for sure there's blessing. Okay, go ahead. Well, I just think, um, like, we may be creating a uh, misunderstanding if every time you ask your husband his advice, you feel that you need to listen because mm. then... Otherwise, it's not going to be good for Shalom Bias if he gave, you know, like... Right, that's and that's a, definitely that's not a, what our tradition says. Right. That's not what our Masora that, says. That no. right, right. And he didn't push her to do it. Right, he was right. just telling her... His. He was giving his side, and mm -hmm. she really did have the end result. So I'm sure if she would have said to him, no, I want to do the creative design thing, I think that's going to be a better option for me. He wouldn't have said... If he would have said to her, no, you need to take this job, we need the money, we right. really need it, this is da da then I agree. Then she should see... Open blessings, like for sure, from that. But if she made mean, the fine, for, if, she, if he, if was he would have harsh, and he would have said to her, "No, this is the job you need to take because this is mm -hmm. what we need for our family." Then obviously, you know, my sister who does a group, um, this a similar group in New York, she had what, the, the same marriage secrets, same club. marriage yeah. secrets class. So she mm -hmm. had the same issue because she's a speech therapist and she was working for the Board of Ed, and she had a different job offer. Um, and her big issue with the Board of Ed was it was more money. And it was obviously she got health insurance and everything else, so it was a much nicer looking package. But she'd be, have to be up at six o'clock. She'd have to be out of the house by by six forty five. She was never there to take her kid to to school. She wasn't there to pick up her kid because the hours were the same hours. So she always missed her her daughter from the pickup. And so she was really feeling frazzled as a mother. Wow. That just she was like, yes, she knew she was. They needed the money and so on and so forth. Then this other job was definitely a much more lucrative in terms of easier. She could come come in at nine. She could leave early. If what do you mean lucrative? Sick, Luc lucrative in terms of um, not the money, package, not it, money. It, oh. Yeah, in terms of what yeah. her her flexibility. She to have a lot more flexibility right. in her in in, her, in the job. And he would be a lot. He also was was religious, so he'd be a lot more of understanding of her religious needs and what needed to happen. Time off and, and she stuff. sat and spoke to her husband about it, and he very much was saying, "Look, I really think." We do need more of the money. and But he right away said to her, let's ask and let's really think about it and let's really come. And then together she kept going back and forth and she kept calling me and saying, I really don't know oh, what to do. And, but at the, end, at the end, she ended up taking the job that's more flexible and is not with the Board of Ed. And she like she's like flying. She like feels like mm -hmm. it's so good. But her husband was behind her at the end, mm -hmm. meaning it wasn't a, there wasn't a friction. He was mm -hmm. just... At first saying, we need it for financial reasons, it's probably better for you to stay at the Board of Ed, but he understood her. I think in this case, it's not like he was forcing her. She, at the right. end, made the final decision, mm -hmm. and she probably was thinking that the money was also, she was thinking of all the things she'd be able to use Mine, and spend and buy. Yes. So she went into it, I mean, with, Eyes open. I think she has so to her, sort of take responsibility for it yeah. that... Her resentment from her, you're saying, is if uh, her is, resentment well, of him is, is, is misplaced. Wrongly, is, is, is misplaced. Mm -hmm. Exactly, is misplaced. And she's I making almost that. an assumption that the other job would have been so great. Creative jobs, graphic design type of jobs have sometimes crazy hours. They sometimes need something ASAP that they send you. The creative people in general are loony bins. <laughs> I mean, look at me. They're all like nuts. There's always things in their head. They could yeah. be very... She could have had terrible people there also. Meaning she's wow. she's built now this yeah. image of this other job being so amazing. 
So the yeah, that's can't fantastic thinking. So the resentment, the question is, how does she get over her resentment? And you're saying taking all these things into consideration will help her mentally to get over the anger that she has to her husband. It's very good. And we're going to learn the exact tools for that in a minute. Okay. Uh, number three was the husband get a fan, got a fancy car. They, it was ridiculously out of budget. It made her not respect his financial decision-making abilities. And she just, he's dry, pulling up in that car and she's just resenting every minute. How does she get over her resentment about this? You're nodding your head like that. Like, she can't like that. Like I'm crazy. looking over there and she's like, like crash the car. <laughs> <laughs> What's the, what does the nod mean? What does the nod mean? You're going like this. She's what like, yeah, that's, a hard, that's a really hard one. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, no yeah. Yeah, no comment. No, that's a really hard one. I think it's harder than all the yeah. She would she would really need to understand her husband's mentality, like his thinking about the car and why he made that decision. Mm -hmm. So really try to engage a conversation. Why why was this so important to him? So what I that's very good and what I and that's similar to what I asked her, which is was this a spontaneous decision or did you guys discuss it first or how did it happen? And her answer was he came home with it. It's mm. called midlife crisis. Yes. Yeah, maybe. Yes. maybe. That's what it is. Yeah, and it's a new thing. I mean, he, you have to also see him. He works hard. And he wants, maybe all his life he wanted, he loved cars and he wants a nice car. And I don't know. Yeah. Maybe she should imagine a pair of shoes. Yeah, that's right. Someone that she wants. not comparable, right. but like, yeah. if you could kind right. of, you know, relate to the Her entire world. desire. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, so the issue is that how can she get over her own resentment? She, in other words, he's going to have the car. It's, she, it's, what'd you say? Buy she said, the take, take, take the car. Take the car. Yeah. But he, 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 the issue is she, he, it's a lease Still, or something like no that. Way. She said, so he's no going to have it for three like, years. He can't get out of it for three I years. I think, honestly, the there's only thing she could yeah. No, no, but there's only, the only yeah? thing she could do is your, is your thing that if she says, God... The car is yours. Meaning, I'm I don't like the car, but honestly, I'm choosing peace. I'm going to be super happy with it. Also, yeah. what's that like? Um, like Baderach Shatam Odei Bamodinota. Like we want Hashem to look at us and just let all the things that we, we do, do slide. You know. Yes. So if you treat other people, especially yeah. your husband, that way, then so you can think to yourself like, hey, this really, you know, financially was not okay, and. I'm entitled to be upset about that, but I'm going to let it just be because kind of my hands are tied at this point. It is what it is. It's done. And hope that others and Hashem will just, when I make a mistake, you know, let it be. And then you have to really let go of it because mm -hmm. it's done. And, and there's nothing wrong with having a conversation and saying that that's what you're doing because that kind of helps you. You mean say it to your husband? Yeah, say like, I was really upset about this, and but I want you to enjoy it now that you have it. And I'm just going to... Release big. myself of it's it. Big. Because otherwise, mm -hmm. how are you moving on? It, mm -hmm. That's the situation. Mm -hmm. So how are you moving forward? Mm -hmm. It's fantastic. You guys mm -hmm. did, this was like a pop quiz. You guys <laughs> did fantastic. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So let's go. I'm going to give our sources. And oh, okay, now I'm going to give you the tool for the day. Okay. Uh, the Gemara in Rosh Hashanah says, one who overlooks others' judgment, mm -hmm. injustices toward him, Hashem will overlook his That's sins. That's what she just said. That's Very what she good. just said. Beautiful, beautiful. <laughs> you and the Gemara. Uh, then, the, uh, and then also, same thing, Ibid, whatever. Is Ibid, Ibid is a funny word. It sounds yeah. like a frog. Okay, and then by forgiving them when they don't really deserve it, Hashem will forgive you when you don't really deserve it, exactly what you said. Mm -hmm. um, in Sefer Vayikra, we learn, you shall neither take revenge nor bear a grudge against the members of your people. You shall love your neighbors as yourself. I am the Lord. Uh, we are not meant to harbor hatred in our heart. The bottom line is by creating possible scenarios in our own mind to mitigate our anger, like we've been doing, you know, like taking his other side of the, you know, taking his side of it, we're doing an act of hesed, which is giving someone the best benefit of the doubt, which is a commandment. Um, and then the last one, uh, the last source is by judging people favorably, we will be judged favor favorably. Okay, here's the tool of today. The tool of the day is the gripes eradicator. Mm. Okay, this is the way to get over your gripes. These are steps to getting over resentments. Number one, recognize the payoff. So ask yourself when something happens, ask yourself, is it really such a big deal? Can I be the bigger person and just let it go? So there's some things that you, gripes that you're caring about 
we're caring about with our husband that we can just say, you know what, I'm going to forgive to be forgive. I'm going to forgive so that God will forgive me or whatever. I'm just going to be the bigger person. I'm just going to let it go. And there might be two things, ten things, twenty things on your in your that you're carrying mentally. And maybe you don't even remember what all of them are, but suddenly you'll be annoyed because your husband's taking the last thing of coffee and you're mad at the, whatever and you have a whole issue about it and you're like, oh, I'm letting that go now. I'm letting it go right now. God, witness me. I'm letting this go now. So the first one is recognize the payoff, that once you let go, just visualize all this blessing, <laughs> blessing coming into your home. Blessing is parnasa, money. It's, it's health. It's your children do well in school. It's you're happier. It's you know the thing that the 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 carpet that has always been sliding around or whatever somehow it sticks to the ground and you don't trip every time you go over it. Whatever it is, that's blessing in your home. We all want more blessing in our home, and that's the way to get that. So when you are thinking, should I forgive? Can I forgive? Can I get over this resentment? If you think of the payoff as blessing in your home, maybe that'll help. Number two, think to overcome it. So I have a whole lot of tools here, which we're going to rattle. I'm going to rattle off in a minute, but you can think w things through to motivate yourself to get over things that you can be forgiving. So we've mentioned a lot of them here today. A lot of them are, you know, like, oh, well, you know, he didn't mean it. It wasn't in his intention, or you know, his what other things that we, that we did tools do we have? Um, D different things, but basically you're using your, I'm going to go through them in a second, but you're going to use your head to think around what forgiving him and forgive him even without talking to him by using your head. So we're going to go through those tools in a second. And the third one is to communicate. If the above two, if you can't get rid of and forgive on your own by using, by, by just, you know, recognizing the payoff and using the tools, then you need to communicate. So what you need to think about what conversation can I have with my husband that will not put him on the defensive, that will get answer the question of what do I want to accomplish in this? Do I want an apology? Do I want him to never do it again? What, what's my goal? Do, am I, and am I blaming him for doing this and, and making him wrong and making the scapegoat for my life? Am I doing it because I've had a bad day and I'm in a bad mood? Thinking about those types of issues and then communicating with him very, very carefully to plan well what you're going to say and how you're going to say it. So fine. Um, OK, let's go quickly through a few tools, and then I'll give you the homework. OK, so um, here's some um, tools to motivate us to get past our gripes. Number one, getting over the mental, mental obstacle of thinking, why should we even bother getting over resentments? If I let, if I get over this and let go of it and forgive him, he's just going to do it again, he, or he's going to get away with doing it and not be punished. So, understanding that that is a little um, less of a mature than we can be, and rising up to the occasion of I'm going to work on forgiveness because God commanded me to do that, and because I'll bring more blessing into my home. Okay. Also, guys, you might communicate with your husbands, but men are. Um, they may not acknowledge or apologize well. If you explain from your heart what has bothered you and why, and you're looking for an apology, you might be waiting a long time. But he might change his behavior. He really might. And that you know, takes time to see. So when you have expressed yourself with full heart and you feel listened to, don't expect instant, you know, perfect behavior. Okay, fine. Um, Fine. Uh, let's see. Okay. Also examine what the purpose of your grudge is. Are you holding on to it because you're trying to make him wrong, you right? Is it, are you looking for, um, uh, you know, a way to make, to, like you, you were saying, you know, not taking responsibility for your, um, what's the word I'm looking for? Your, your uh, 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 yeah, your decisions, your, your, your part of that decision, you know, your, your volitional uh, decision. I was looking for vo volitional. Okay. So next thing is, did she, did you, um, uh, are you, you have to also understand one thing, that forgiveness is an action, not a feeling. So if you're waiting for the forgiveness feeling to come over you, and then you're going to forgive, you'll be waiting a long time. It's not an, uh, it's not a feeling. It's an action. It's something we do volitionally, 
to make things better. Okay, um, other thing is say it even if you don't feel it. This we know from our sources that if you take an action, you'll feel it afterwards. Also make up stories like, oh, the reason he must have done that is he had a tough day, or the reason he did that is because he didn't understand how hurtful it would be for him to say it's because she eats donuts all day. It didn't even dawn on him because he's a man, and if someone said that about him, it wouldn't bother him, so he did. So making up stories about why they did what he did is, helps you to forgive. Um, also looking for the good. So, you know, I had a student and her mother-in-law, her husband always took the mother-in-law's side. So the, whatever they were doing, the mother-in-law, she would have her opinion, her mother-in-law would have an opinion, and the husband would take the mother-in-law's side, which just, it was, it was, she resented it so much. Even the mother-in-law had, had passed away years before, and she still had this anger until she recognized one thing, which is what you were talking about, which is intention. He did this because he thought that there's a Torah commandment, give it out of aim, honor your parents. And that's why he did that, because he was trying to be a good boy. Now, again, he didn't go through, a man should leave his, his, his uh, family and cleave to his wife. That's, even, that's more important than honoring your parents. In every, we have many, many sources that say it's more important to take care of your wife than your parents. So he, he made that mistake. But his intention and the reason he did it was he was trying to be a good person. Very crucial to think about. Okay, fine. Uh, let me just see if I've got one last one for you. Oh, yeah, okay. One last one is that it's all from Hashem, that whatever happens in your life, and remembering that, like your husband did this thing and he said you ate too many donuts, so maybe God wanted you to know, hey, slow down with the donuts or something. Okay, he was the one who told it to you, but if you think of everything from Hashem, maybe it'll help you to forgive more. Fine. The wrap-up for today is Leia's secret of the day is always recognize that the payoff to getting over resentments is, uh, yeah, the payoff to, to getting over resentments is that you're going to have more blessing in your home, more shalom in your home, more good things in your home by getting it over it. So if you're having trouble forgiving, just realize that by doing so, the payoff is that you're getting more peace in your home. And the homework of the week is let go of one gripe this week and come back and report on it. This is Ladies Talk Show with Leah Richheimer. Thank you so much for joining us. See you next week.